Okay, I literally have no idea if this is going to work. <laughs> I really have no idea. But some people ask for it. So I'm going to attempt to build live that robotic arm with these parts. There's the entire robotic arm. Because uh, like a few people asked, so I'm going to try. Um, I'm not taking apart the base. The base is very simplistic. Uh, that's it. You got the uh, 16 tooth crown gears inside there, and they come up through there. That's it. Um, you'll see what all these little doohickers is for in the future. So <clears throat> there are literally no, well, very very little special parts at all. Uh, if you have any newer Technic sets, you have the three length universal joint. Uh, you need that instead of the four, the old one, and you need a 5L axle, which right now I can't remember what it's for. <laughs> we'll get there. So here we go. Um, you have to, and I should should have actually taken that thing apart. You start here. Oh, let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, so I got to maybe, maybe... I'll do some video editing and lower this thing and raise it up so you can see what I'm doing on the fly, on the fly, professional to the bone. This thing's on a tripod. So there you go, four L axles. Uh, I'm just looking at that thing over there. <laughs> I forgot how to do this stuff. Uh, so that goes there. Yeah, you can see that. So let's just keep on going. That goes there. Uh, this guy goes here. I'm not going to keep on saying this. I'm just going to keep on building and you guys can do your own commentary. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk about maybe other things. I don't know yet. Um, the, I will say that this thing took many, many iterations to build. And uh, overall, I had a really, really good time with it. Uh, is that the long axle? I think it's the long axle here. It comes up to here. So you see that? And this goes in there. And then a worm gear. And then it just goes on top of there. And then I think it is a 2L two, two axle. It goes on top of here like that. My... Uh, my good friend Chris showed me this years ago. And it's called the Worm to 24. Now, they have made better Worm to 24s uh, in the past. Uh, the clear ones, that uh, is one, one unit, but this is uh, what we need here. And then we get this guy. Uh, I use clutch gears because this thing will work with regular gears, but if you over torque it, you will break things. And that, that's not good for anybody. So, and then a, a 3L axle through there. And then this goes on the other side. So you can see that the axles, the axle sticks out on both sides. And of course, the one to 24, I think that thing's thinner up. So that is that part done. Now you have to do the front part, which is where this, this guy comes into play, the uh, three, L universal joint and you put a 3L axle onto the end of the universal joint like so and then you push it through right there and then you put the gear on the bottom so that's that's good there so far and then this thing keeps on going up here so you put the other L uh, subless thing there so it looks like that and you put one more of these on the uh, outside And that is almost, as they say that. Now what I do is I put these little yellow uh, half bushings on there and that will come apparent very, very soon. Why I do that, and then there we go. So that's the, that's the foundation of the arm. And you can already see, this is for the pulling the, the big arm, the lower arm up, and this is for moving the, the upper arm back and forth. So. We'll put, we'll put that aside for a second so you can see it right there over there and we are going to build the upper arm because that's just fun <laughs> which is pretty easy so uh 
get a four, put a two uh, L axle like that. And then you put this thing on here. Now this is just uh, for show. Uh, this is for the, um, the user parts, the, the welder end, whatever you want to call it, the scanner end. I, I used to have a light when I had this thing originally. I had a, a light tube coming through here, so this thing would be flashing. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> but, uh, and then a 3L axle through here, just like that. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. And then that part is the front part of the upper arm is finished, like that. And then the back part was just adding two more like that. <laughs> and that is the upper arm in its entirety. <laughs> so pretty easy. Uh, then the lower arm or the, uh, yeah, the lower arm has another uh, worm to 24 set up. So we'll do that first. So we'll get this guy. Uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's one of my favorite parts from back in the day. And we'll set up the exactly the same thing, worm to 24 that we had before, <sighs> which means that we need um, and it's, that's a 2L axle, and this is going to be a 3L axle because it has to connect to the parts below it. And then this thing, like these things have to be in a row. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then I think, I think, if I remember correctly, that is going to be the 8. Yes, it's going to be 8L axle that goes through here. Uh, put the little half bushing on, and then the worm gear. And then put the other half bushing on the other end. Bum, bum, bum. A little song and dance for Hasn't Taz. So that's that's that part done. And then again, the um, clutch gear with a three. Did I have a three L axle? I ran out of three L axles. I forgot to grab one. Give me a sec. Oh, it's right there. Sorry. <laughs> forgot to put it up. Three L axle. Uh, maybe I used an axle where I shouldn't have, but we'll figure it out later. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. So. This is the gizmo to move the upper arm up and down, but we're not finished building the lower arm yet because you have to put these things on the bottom like that. So it makes a nice lower arm. And then what you can do is if you want, um, it goes like that. Uh, there we go. This thing goes on here. Hit one side off. There we go. So now, you move, move this thing goes up and down so that's the bit you can close it so there's your upper arm and your lower arm already done and you got your foundation already done so coming along swimmingly fine now to put the two together of course you see that universal and it connects to the 8l axle like that right and then this is why you have to use the 3l universal because you want oh sorry you want the Hinge to be right in that hole. Because if you use a 4L, it's hard to get the geometry right. And then you use these little half, half pins. And then this thing goes up and down like that. See? Pretty easy. <laughs> Pretty easy. And then on the back part, we'll just do this right now. Uh, just get a, th a three stud, a half beam. Put it there on the back here like that. And then uh, maybe this is where the five comes in. And two, three. Yes, it is. So this this is going to be fun. So this is again not to make it classic face colors. <laughs> that wasn't the intent, but uh, you have to put the full bushing in the middle of the beam because it has to go over <clears throat> the twenty-four tooth gear there. And you put what, uh, the three on the other side. So now you got this thing here, like that. And you got that thing like that. And then you get these 8L uh, half beams, the older ones. You can use newer ones. You can use whatever you want. Oh, that's why I screwed up. So this is not supposed to be a three. This is supposed to be a four. And I'll show you why in a sec. So I'll just push the three out and I'll get that four in there. So you can see a 4L axle here sticks out. So the 4L axle has to go through this, this friction, uh, this, this torque gear. Uh, and I'll show you why in a sec. So these things, these 8L arms go here and are held on by that guy. And one on the other side and held on by that guy. So, so now 
these things connect to the lower part of the lower arm at the highest uh, hole that is an actual hole, not an axle hole. Uh, so it's just like that. Sorry, I'm off screen. So there you go. So that's the literally the entire arm. And then this goes up and down. Now I modified it from this guy. When I was playing with it, this guy only used a 6L uh, half beam. I put an 8 in here that gives me more, lee more, more leeway uh, to get the arm farther out and farther back. Now this is why we put the 4L axle in there because now the arm stops right there. The arm cannot go farther back because it hits the axle, which is what you want. Um, and going forward, this thing hits here. So this, this cannot go down. Now you can change it if you want, change the geometry. But if the, the more you change the farther out, then the, the universal is not going to work anymore because the universal will be too angled to work. So right now the universal works here. Well, is it fully extended this way? And the universal works here when it's fully back. So that the upper arm still works no matter where the lower arm is. So it's just, it's just a built-in mechanical stop. That's all it's for. So now that you got this part, you have to put it into this part and then put it on top of this part. <laughs> so this is why we use four L axles at the bottom here. Um, we're gonna do this first. We're gonna put this thing here. And I am missing a piece. Let me just get that. I didn't have enough pieces out here. So the, I think it's called differential. <laughs> my, my auto shop a long time ago. And this is the older type. Uh, it's got the, not the oldest type, which is a light gray one, but it's got the 24 tooth gear on and the 16 tooth gear down here. And you put it on this way, but 20, 24 tooth gear at the top, because the 24 tooth gear interfaces with the eight tooth gear there. And then you have to put a half bushing on the bottom to hold it there. <laughs> so, um, that's fine. So there we go. So the, 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 get this thing all straightened out. So this is all now one piece. Uh, and what's going to happen is you have to have the axle low enough down here to go through here to plug into the 16 tooth crown gear down here in the bottom here. So this is all one piece. It goes through here. So you can see that the uh, the differential, it's called differential? I think it's called U differential. Uh, is top and bottom. It's not uh, liaising with this at all. Uh, and the, the, the axle in the middle that's going up through still controls the, the lower arm. And then when you spin this one, it controls the upper arm. Now it's a cheat. Well, it's not a cheat. I mean, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, but it is just a quick way of doing it so, uh, anyway, so, uh, and then this goes in here. And the reason why we use four L axles before is because it's just easier to put this whole thing in here as is. And then, uh, instead of trying to build it in here, because right now you're going to push the six L axle through here. Oops. If you can, I, I did this a million times, but of course on camera, uh, ba -da -ba -ba. let me just see if I can do this on camera. Of course, I can get the stage right. Come on, there we go. Anytime now. <laughs> it has to line up. Come on. Oh, this is odd. Sure, I did it off camera and it worked perfectly fine. And now it's not. So I'm going to put that there. Let's try it this way. There we go. <laughs> you push that through. Uh, of course, pushing uh, axles through a bunch of stuff like that is hard. So I usually have something else, but oh, come on. Now I'm just being nervous, and that just sucks. 
So the foil axle comes out the other side. <laughs> and let's see if this side's going to be any easier. Uh, yeah, so this is much easier. There we go. So now the whole arm is inside the big turntable. This is working, that's working. Uh, this is working, that's working. And so all you have to do now is just plug this thing into, so you got the 16 tooth gear here, which liaises with the 16 tooth gear in the bottom of the universal, I mean the uh, differential. And you got the eight tooth gear here, inter interacting with the big, huge turntable gear. And then you have this axle here, which just goes straight through down to the 16 tooth ground gear. So you just put this thing in here like that. And all of a sudden you now have one guy turns the main turntable, so this, the gears go here, here, and up to here. This guy, and this guy's always a little bit of a temperamental, you have to make sure it's on there properly. Okay. Yeah. I have to take it apart to get that gear on there properly. This gear, this, I mean, this axle sometimes pops up. So now you just put this 16 tooth crown gear on there like that. Again, <laughs> this one's working fantastically well before I made this video. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Um, put this back in there. Doo, 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 doo. So now this guy pulls back the arm. I'm gonna turn this thing so it, it faces you. There we go. And then it goes the other way, just like that. And then this guy over here on the other side. Uh, so you can see it down there. It just goes up and down with that little arm. It comes up. It goes through the the center 16 tooth crown gear. It comes into. It turns the universal. You can see the universal. I mean the uh, differential turning inside there, uh, which turns the eight tooth, which turns the universal joint, which comes up to the worm gear, which then turns the 24 tooth uh, clutch gear. And so you can keep on turning it. It doesn't anymore. And so that's why I use the clutch gears. Um, there we go. I'm gonna go pull this back. So that, in 17 minutes, <laughs> is that. So, and then of course I still have mine over there on that guy. So that's it, that's all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did, <laughs> besides my little bit of stage fright. Um, but that's Sailor V. Uh, this is, this is, we'll come back over here. This, I really do, uh, I really did enjoy um, designing this thing and designing uh, trial and error. <laughs> trial and error, this thing is over the, uh, I can't remember I did my first iteration of this. Uh, but again, I, I like to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and, uh, and I think this is just the, the, the easiest thing I've ever seen when it's done. Uh, and it really does a really nice job to um, make some movement in a uh, plant, uh, whatever, a nice little three, th I guess it's a three uh, axis because it's got the, it's got the main turntable for 360 degrees. It has the um, lower arm going up and down um, and then it has the upper arm going up and down. So you should be able to place this, this end point anywhere in a, semi-sphere that you want so um and again if you come up with a, a easier quicker better faster neater funner design all <laughs> this is this was a hack job but as soon as i got to the point where it's working i just didn't bother put any more effort into it uh the foundation the base of it was a lot of fun that took a lot of iterations but the upper arm and the lower arm didn't, didn't really change at all uh, from my first iteration to this one. Uh, but the foundation, I, I actually used originally instead of the L uh, half bush, uh, half beams, I used the one with the curve on it. And that kind of looked cute with the little curve coming out the bottom. But I thought, eh, <laughs> uh, the L works just fine too. And so you can use the one with the, the actual, the four, uh, 90 degree curve radius there. Um, doesn't really matter. I actually pulled them out to show you, but I, I cleaned it up and put it away. Um, so that's it. That's all. Uh, I hope this was uh, something that people found worthy. And um, 
what what I did uh, somebody mentioned that I would that it would be really neat if we used a um, uh, rotation sensors and rotation sensors are awesome don't get me wrong rotation sensors are one of my favorite sensors for the RCX the issue for me is for a for a display for uh, the public rotation sensors add a lot of overhead for programming uh, to verify and you know whatever um, so on this guy over here what I did was I built in an actual physical stop so this this thing cannot rotate past on the on the main turntable cannot rotate past this point so it can't go 360 degrees it comes here it goes uh, 270 degrees because you can go all the way around and hits to the other side too so this is the stop so this when it hits here it goes zero zero and then it, it just sets it where I want it to go. Um, so every time it resets itself, it just goes back to the zero point and the, and the, the things up and the, the arms, the upper arms close down. Um, it's just a physical hard stop. You can use rotation sensors. And what happens is that on this guy, we'll come back over here. On this guy, what you do is that you have a little piece of whatever on this thing, and a touch sensor right here, uh, built on here. So this thing, when it comes around, it hits, a, it hits the touch sensor. So all of a sudden it knows that that's a touch sensor, uh, and, but it still has 360 degree movement on the, on the road. And then, so the rotation sensor says from, these things have physical hard stops. So that when it gets to the physical hard stop, you reset it to zero. That's it, right? It can't go past here. So this is zero and this is 180, right? Basically, uh, this is zero here and this is like 90, right? So, or whatever that angle is. Uh, but the, the rotation, I mean, the uh, big turntable, it can just go around until the cows come home, <laughs> right? And so uh, you put, I, I, I did it, you, you build a little piece down here uh, that juts out and then it would touch the touch sensor. So all of a sudden you tell, the RCX knows exactly where the, uh, which way it's facing. And then you can go with how many degrees you want to turn which way one or the other. Uh, so rotation sensors do work on here. I've had it working on here before. Uh, it's just that uh, for a show, I just say turn uh, from the uh, hard stop, turn five seconds this way, uh, push this up three seconds, push down two seconds, and then just go back and forth like you're waving. Uh, that's all I do for a show. Uh, simple, simple program, just go back and forth three or four times. The kids love it. <laughs> so, so rotation sensors aren't needed for that. Um, and then when it's done, just reset itself back to zero and go back until it hits the hard stop. Uh, so in the end, uh, it can be, uh, and, and, and your, and what you put on the end is entirely up to you. As I said, I use the, um, uh, the light, um, flexible tube that came in, I want to say Spybotics, but I don't think it came in Spybotics. I think it came in the R2D2, uh, but the long flexible tube, trans clear, uh, and I had it coming out here into, uh, a two by two inverted radar dish. Uh, and so the radar dish would light up and you could see the whole tube light up as it's lighting that up uh, And I just had a light pulsing from the different because this is three motor outputs by the way <laughs> To do this three motor outputs. So I had a completely different RCX powering the lighting of my uh, robotic arm back in the day uh, And it would just flash and it looked like it was welding or scanning or something um, That worked out well, and I wish I had a video of that I, I, I should go back in my YouTube channel like 15 20 years ago to see if I could find one but it was a lot of fun. But this is easy, quick. Uh, as they say, there's zero, there's two semi rare parts a 5L axle, which seems to come into everything these days, and a 3L uh, universal joint, which again, so I don't have a lot of new Technic sets, but um, um, it seems to be ubiquitous these days in sets these days. So, other than that, all these pieces are pretty standard for anybody who has any kind of Technic collection. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, the, the, as I say, you can just use a 24 tooth gear and then just use the, the, um, the pulleys and the, and the elastics, the, the rubber bands to make a slip differential or a slip gear outside of here, like down here when you're interfacing this with the motor. So if it gets to full stop, it'll just spin down here. Uh, that's doable too. I just found it just easier to put the, the clutch gears up here if you have the clutch gears. Uh, that's 24 minutes. I'm, I'm done. I am going to go to bed now. And uh, um, 
I do, well, I will say this. I do like this one better than what I just built today than this one. And there's a few things that I found wrong with this guy. And I will take it apart and show you because I can't. You see that 16 tooth gear? Anybody who knows that 16 tooth gear knows it's been modified because <laughs> I was lazy. And so I can take this apart because I don't like that anymore. I cut off the nubs on the bottom of this 16 tooth gear. You can see the nubs on the top. So it wouldn't lock into the, the plate on top here. So that was a complete cheat on my part. I was too lazy to raise it up. And you can see right in here, I just put the yellow half bushing underneath here. And there's a yellow half bushing underneath the 16 tooth in there. That's it. So no modifications, no sanding, no drilling, no <laughs> wrecking parts. This is a 100% Lego complete without modifying parts, uh, which was better than this guy. I'm probably going to modify this guy to be this guy now because I like that. And I also like, again, uh, this, this bottom part is a lot nicer too. So anyway, that's it. That's all. Uh, if you guys have any more questions about this guy, uh, absolutely drop me a line. Um, and I will see what uh, other videos I can make. I'll put this on the screen there before we go to bed. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that's it. That's all. Uh, that went a little better than I thought and a little worse than I thought. Uh, that six, the six L axle trying to get it through. I was actually shocked because I did it. I did, even did it back here. Uh, cause it's a lot easier to build the foundation and then put it on the, on the, uh, big, huge turntable than then trying to build it on the turntable. Uh, and trying to get everything in there. Um, so, but anyway, questions, concerns, problems, issues, let me know. Talk to you soon.